Hi everyone. Some people have advised me to do my sit down chats like this, not in front of my now 254 5K or longer age group awards that I've received since 2006. Just on plants. Yeah, it says eat more plants, don't it? Yeah, it does. So, of course, you may see Princess and Pumpkin kind of going at it as they do. Lately, they have been just getting wild and rambunctious. And when I turn on the camera or get on a Zoom call, it's just kind of like kids, right? So, this was the Firecracker 5K down in Northport. That's the nice finishers medal. Now, most of these are not finishers, medals. Most of them are age group awards, like that one you can see, second place. It was arguably, actually no argument, it was the hottest 5K I've ever done. And, and most people who were there that I talked to agreed with that. And it wasn't so much the temperature, which was coming in at 80 degrees, which is not unusual for Florida this time of year at 7.30 in the morning which is why they had it at 7.30 in the morning, because by 8.30, it would have been 10 degrees warmer. And the humidity was 95%. I actually did a screenshot of the Weather Channel and posted that on my Facebook post, just because it, it was like doing a biathlon. You felt like you were swimming in it. it another 5% up to 100% humidity, and it would have been raining, although there was not a cloud in the sky. So. I just wanted to let you know this is ongoing and still continuing. And even in the summertime here, I'm trying to find an occasional race. I had not raced in a month since the National Senior Games. I was doing that dreaded R word rest, trying to just give my body some time to recover. And I really, like most runners, hate the R word and uh, just feel like my body goes to hell. <laughs> when I'm not running more than you know a week or especially two or in my case four. So what was it like to take that long of a rest? Now I got inspiration for doing this from my when I was putting together my book my fourth book Vegan Fitness for Mortals. I did some research and just googled the Kenyan marathon runners these are just it's such an amazing group of runners and they're pretty much seriously born to run and everywhere they go in their immediate environment basically they're running and they don't really have to do special training because that's just the way their communities are so it's pretty cool to see how uh, even during their summer their season off they literally would be couch potatoes at least that's what i ran across when i i googled it at the time so florida because it is so terribly hot here in the summertime and it's the humidity that really gets you most races pretty much shut down this was well before covid the next race i'm scheduled to do is at the end of august and that's a good two months or so from the time of this recording. And so we're forced to rest. But I had taken this time off from the senior games where I was all out. As you know, I got three out of, uh, I placed in three out of the seven events that I did. I was the only woman in my age group to enter all seven track events. People usually just pick uh, one or two and focus on that. But I figured, you know, it's the same registration, about $5 or so more to enter each race. And the consumer reporter in me said it's a bargain, so why not just go ahead and try all the events? And I do that in uh, the, the local and the state competitions as well. So it's good. Uh, it's good practice. It's forced training. All the races I view as forced training. But I was concerned about taking this much time off and how it would affect things. Would I, I mean, obviously I placed second in the race this weekend and everybody else has the same humidity and weather conditions to deal with. But I've had, you know, being a runner for 41 years, I don't complain. I don't like to complain. And I feel like having been on a vegan diet all this time, 
has really kept the bad things away, like arthritis. However, I fell through a trampoline when I was in high school. My, they had, uh, back in those days, things were not nearly as safe as they are now, but the trampoline was kind of this interlaced webbing and my big toe got stuck in one of the holes. And as I jumped up, my foot stayed in the trampoline embedded in it. And when I landed, when I came down on it, I came down on my ankle and it just gave out like that. I was on crutches for two months and sometimes doctors will say that sprains are worse than breaks, and in this case, it absolutely was. And to this day, it still flares up. And I've had it x-rayed, MRI'd, nothing is really going on there that they can see, but it's suspected that the tendons uh, or the ligaments just may be stretched and uh, making the bone land a certain, uh, or, or just kind of uh, impinging a nerve where the, the bone is in that area. Who knows? It's anybody's guess, but it hurts like hell. And the bizarre thing is when I did the Skyway Bridge, that's the 10K back in March, everything was fine until the incline. And about halfway up the bridge, so it's two miles up, two miles down on that fun little bridge, I had a race stopping pain in my ankle. And I was able to stop and do ankle rotations like that and then stretch my heel out and Achilles and it went away enough that I could finish the race and do fine. I was still eighth in my age group out of you know thousands of people who raced that day. So the same thing happened in this race this past weekend and I walked, of course, checking behind me to make sure there were no 65 to 69 year olds catching up. I was the oldest, by the way, in my age group. So I was really pleased that I was able to get second. Uh, I think there were a total of six in my age group. But this ankle pain has still been, uh, it, was, it was exacerbated as it tends to be at the senior games, as was my left hip. Now, nothing going on with that other than, as you might be able to see, I am sitting in this, uh, let's be a little more modest here, but I always sit with my legs crossed and I try not to, I really try to just <laughs> sit like, um, not like this, but with the legs uncrossed. And I've had physical therapists scream at me, uncross your legs, because it, it pulls the muscles. Um, okay, dinner is getting ready. Uh, it, it pulls the muscles, the hip flexors, just stretches them in weird positions. And also when I'm driving, um, I sit with my, sometimes if I'm on a long drive, I like to kind of stretch out my lower back. So I'll put my knee up against the dashboard, which God forbid there is an accident that would not end well for my hips to be in that position. So I try not to do that too much, but sometimes you just can't help it, especially like I drove to the Columbia Veg Fest where I spoke, uh, and just recently, and it was, um, you know, it, it was, what, 12 hours, something like that. And, and um, yeah, Princess got to stay with her babysitter. And so you don't wanna stop every hour, but technically you really should, because you know, your watch is saying time to move kind of thing, so. I think it was a good idea to take the rest because who knows, the injury could have gotten worse. And uh, since I've been a high school cross country track and field coach and I'm getting my hand and arm licked here, <laughs> it's always, always about the dog, right? Uh, <laughs> so I, I know that you have to take time off. Your body always wins and you have to listen to it. And I'm hopeful that I am taking enough time off between the upcoming races that it will be enough time that these little cranky things that rear their ugly heads after 41 years of running and basically no serious injuries, that it's it's going to be just fine. But I thought I would want to, I thought I'd share that with you. It's not like we're superhuman or anything like that. And a hawk just flew by. Uh, I mean, an owl. <laughs> we live in this amazing place. It's actually kind of in the middle of the woods. I think you can see out the window there. And we had we saw a bobcat on our morning walk with Princess just not too long ago. Um, and yeah, the price of moving in on the environment of animals is that you see them. And 
and uh, just try and coexist and not freak out and have animal control come take them away or do anything like that, which has happened here in in the past. But trying to, there's so much building going on in Florida with all these new neighborhoods, not so much right around where I am, but certainly in the Sarasota area. And so these animals have to go somewhere. So we just try, I saw some big paw prints on the other side of the house and um, we have a fenced in yard and try and keep an eye on the animals, of course, when they're outside and we close everything up at night. So these, these larger cats and birds of prey, uh, when they're at work at night, our, our pets are not out there. So that's it. I hope you're having a peaceful summer and some really insane times. It's important to keep your exercise routine up and going and yet listening to your body when you need to take rest. If I can help you with your program, know that I am a certified running coach, Roadrunners Club of America, the largest running organization and usually uh, the certifying body of most road races in the United States. So I think it's time to feed Princess. Yes, you're such a good girl. I know, I know. And if I can help you in any way, please let me know. Don't forget to like and subscribe and get notified when I've got a new video up, which I'm trying to increase more. Really, I've been doing them once a week, but I'm going to try and do more just because the world needs to go vegan like yesterday. If we were all, that's really what I wanted to say is if we were all vegan, it would just answer so many things. Um, we'd have so much more of a peaceful world and uh, compassionate understandings of the problems that many of us are going through. Some of us, of course, much worse than others, but we, we've got to get this right. Um, I know so many people who are really depressed because they feel like we've run out of time. But that doesn't mean we're going to give up trying and doing what we can to leave the world in a better place than when we started out. I was speaking to my cousin who was just a two, uh, just a couple of years older than me this afternoon and he was really pretty depressed and we were just talking about how we grew up in a family that uh, is very focused on, was focused on trying to improve the world and leave it in a better place. So well, I've got to hop on a Zoom call, but thanks for listening and let me know if I can help you. Got to run.